Shalom, brothers and sisters. Uh, first off, I want to salute you all in the name of Ahaya Bashim and Shia Barak uh, We thank you for attending tonight's class. Um, give all praise to the Most High Ahaya uh, for everything. Uh, we just pray that all is well with you and your families. You're all, uh, you're all in good health. We give all praise to the Most High. Um, tonight's class, uh, we're going to be talking about, um, you know, the the un the true understanding of communion. So we'll title it communion. And uh, the first reference we're going to get into tonight is uh, St. John, the 15th chapter. We're going to start at the 12th verse. Uh, once again, we're going to St. John, chapter 15, verse 12. And I thought this lesson is very important. Um, when you read the scriptures, you know, our Lord and Savior tells us to do, you know, do this in remembrance of him and, uh, you know, do it until he returns. So, you know, it's a commandment that we do partake in the communion. And I know that most of the brothers and sisters on the line, as well as myself, uh, coming out of, uh, you know, came out of the church, you know, the Christian churches. And, you know, every first Sunday of the month, you know, you do the communion. But um, in, in the churches, they fail to really give an understanding on why we do communion and how important it is. And, you know, the real understanding according to the scriptures on why we do communion. And I felt, as, you know, it's important that brothers and sisters on the line know why we do communion so that, you know, if one day we do partake as a body in the communion, you know, you, you know you're know, uh, aware of, you know, what you're doing. You understand uh, why you're doing it and, and what you're stating in taking the communion. So you know, we're going to get to some scriptures tonight, precepts to get the further understanding on what the true meaning of communion is, because I know that in the churches they uh, they, they pretty much they're reenacting the Last Supper. You know, they play the music and they get all emotional and things like that. But we're going to show you according to the scriptures that that's not why we do communion. Um, so the first reference for tonight, we're going to first precept. We're going to go to St. John, chapter 15, verse 12. The book of St. John, chapter 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. So now you may ask, why am I bringing this scripture out in general communion? Uh, we're going to get the, you know, the true understanding on how, you know, communion, uh, it really means that as a body, you know, you got that love for your brother and your sister. As a body, there's no issues within the body. You know, when you break, when you break that bread, when you, when you drink of that cup, you know, you're saying that everyone who's partaking in this communion with me, I have no issues with. It's all love. I love you like Christ loved me. And this is the love that we must have for each other. All right, and we're going to, you know, get into further uh, scriptures to prove it. All right, go ahead. Verse 13. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And that's the greatest love, the love that our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, showed us when he went to the cross and, and, and uh, you know, was crucified. He took all on the punishment that, you know, we would have had to if, you know, uh, if we, we did sins. Like certain sins, you know, you would have, you have to get put to death. But now, you know, no longer do we get put to death. Why? Because our Lord and Savior showed that great, the great love and, and uh, crucified, and he was crucified. All right, and we're, we're going to tie this all in to how this links into what the true meaning of communion is. All right, go ahead. Verse 14. Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever, I command you. And we want to be called, you know, the friend of the Most High, the friend of our Lord and Savior, because, you know, our forefather Abraham was a friend of the Most High. And, you know, we see the personal relationship he had and how the Most High blessed him, you know, and how the Most High, you know, delivered him. So, you know, we're only, we're only our Lord and Savior's friends if we do what he commanded us. And what did he command us? To love one another like he loved us, you know, like the Scripture tells us. Um, love your neighbor like you love yourself. You know, if you if you hurting, you would want somebody to come out and help you. So when you see your neighbor down, you know, help him out. That's that's what our Lord and Savior would have done. All right, let's get the next one. We're going to uh, Saint Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter five, verse twenty-one. 
Once again, we're going to Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. And like I say, pretty much on all the lessons I do, uh, you know, these scriptures go totally against what we've been taught in this world. You know, in this world, it's all about, you know, get your own. You know, it's all about you. Forget everybody else. You know, I'm, I'm doing what I want to do. But our Lord and Savior shows us, hey, man, you know, we need our brothers and our sisters. Our brothers and sisters need us. You know, that, that you know, bond must be there within a brother and a sister. But in the world, they don't teach that. The world is, you know, just when you get up, you, you know, you have your own family, you grow up, you know, you get your own, and that's it, man. But they don't teach that love. And, uh, you know, our Lord and Savior, that's what he was all about, you know, bringing Israel. Because at the time, you know, Israel was, you know, all over the place, right? You know, worshiping this guy, worshiping that guy, you know, just going off. And what our Lord and Savior did, he came, he came to the scene to bring Israel back together, bring Israel back to who they are. And, you know, it, it's still a constant battle. We see our brothers and our sisters out there of Israel who's just going off. We must continue to be that light for them. You know, when, let's say, you know, we're, we're at the Passover. And, and it's a quick example. When we was at the, um, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, late night, it, you know, it was over, uh, pretty much over. Everyone was walking to the car, and, and there was this guy. He came up to me. I don't know if anyone else seen him, uh, but he was like, hey, what's going on over here? I was like, um, you know, oh, you know, we're just doing our feast day. He said, oh, okay. And he and he just came up to me, and he said, oh, you guys are Israelites, huh? And I was like, yeah, how'd you know? He's like, yeah, man, it, you think I don't know? Uh, you know, he kind of got offended by it. He said, you know, I, you know, I may look dumb or something like that, he said, but he knows. And he said, it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, that really stuck with me because it shows that us being together as brothers and sisters, fellowshipping, you know, being out there for others to see, you know, it, it's, a, it's truly a blessing. And we know that the scripture says that, uh, we're actually going to get that one after, uh, you are my, you know, other people will know that you're my disciples because you love one another. And we see in the world, they, they don't show that love to each other. You know, they're really shooting each other down in the streets and things like that. So when we're out there in the world, you know, as a, as a brotherhood, a sisterhood, you know, as a family, one body, you know, just being that light for brothers and sisters out there who are lost, you know, they gravitate towards it. So, you know, we must continue, not, not just only for us as brothers and sisters, you know, as, as to, um, you know, um, as one body, but, you know, it helps other people as well who are not in the body. You know, they say, oh, what's going on over here? This is this is something, okay. You know, they, they, so they want to see what's going on over here because in the world they don't get that, all right? So uh, next reference we get to is uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 21. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse, verse 22. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Right, so Christ took it to another level. He says not only if you commit this, the commit the act of murder or um, you know, what was it? What was the other one? Oh, it's just murder. Yeah, not only if you commit that act of murder, but if you have that spirit overtake you, you're just as guilty. Why? Because when that opportunity presents itself, you know you're gonna do it. All right, go ahead. And remember, real quick, real quick, and remember, brothers and sisters, we're talking about communion right now. We're going to tie this all in on how this relates to communion. You may ask, why am I bringing these scriptures out? We're going to show you how this all ties into what the true meaning of communion is. Go ahead. Verse 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother have aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother. And then come and offer that gift. So you see the Lord of Lord, King of Kings telling you that it's more important that you, you know, dead all the issues, whatever the problems you have with your brother or your sister, you know, take care of those things first before you come and give, you know, your, your gift, to, you know, uh, 
basically to the priest. All right, go ahead. To to ask basically for your forgiveness for your sins. All right, go ahead. That's it. All right, that was it. All right, let's get the next one. We're going to Mark, uh, chapter eleven, and we're going to go to verse twenty-five. Once again, we're going to go to Mark chapter eleven, verse twenty-five, and uh, this one actually gives a clearer understanding on what what he was talking about in uh, the fifth chapter of Matthew. All right, go ahead. This is the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 25. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Right, so when, and how does this link to communion? When we partake in that bread, like I said earlier, and drink of the cup, we have to make sure that there's no issues whatsoever with our brothers or our sisters. People who who are uh, drinking of that breaking of that same bread, you know, breaking of you know, drinking of the same cup, so to speak. Uh, we have to make sure that there's no issues between us as a body, because once you know, we'll have that spirit that was in Judas when he sat down with our Lord and Savior at the Last Supper, and we know that that spirit drove him to you know to do what he did. Not saying that if you have a, if you drink of the cup with an issue, you're gonna go all you know, go somewhere and kill yourself. That's not what we're saying, but we're saying that that evil spirit will be over you, and it messes up the whole body. Like we always bring the scripture out, or mainly reference it, a uh, little leaven messes up the whole lump, or leaven at the whole lump. So when we have that little issue within the body, all, all our brothers and sisters are one accord, and we feel everything is great, you know, we're, 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 you know, we're moving forward, but yet you still have an issue with somebody, you know, Eventually, you know, it may take some time, but eventually the Most High will reveal it. You know, something's going to happen, and you're just going to blow your top. But we want to make sure we don't get to that point. So, you know, we we handle all the issues that we have with one another. And it's okay if you have an issue. You know, that's normal. You know, the scriptures let us know what's going to happen. We're going to read later in First Corinthians when in the Church of Corinth there was issues. And Paul, you know, told them that communion is the answer. All right? Uh, go ahead. This is verse 26. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And that's pretty deep. You know, you, you holding grudges and you still asking the Most High to forgive you. So, you know, think about that. When you, when you lay down and pray at night, whenever you pray, wake up in the morning, pray, middle of the day you pray, you know, think about that. Do I have anything against my brother or my sister right now? Because I'm over here asking the Most High who I cannot see you know, asking him to forgive me, but yet I can't even forgive my brother who's right over here or right down the street from me or right around the corner. I can't forgive him. And our Lord and Savior lets you know, if you don't forgive that brother, the Most High is not going to forgive you. So he shows you how deep it is that, you know, have no issues between each other. Okay? Uh, let's get our next one. We're going to um, Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Once again, we're going to Matthew uh Chapter 18, verse 15. And, you know, I feel this is important because, like I said, a lot of us are coming out of the churches, and in the churches they're really, well, you know, the, I can speak for all the churches. They don't really teach you how to deal with one another, you know. They don't really teach you how to forgive. You know, they don't really teach you, you know, the importance of not holding grudges, you know, because why? Uh, we've been in the church, you know, um, well, they'll partake in the communion, and then you know, on the on the ride home, I, I've been you know, I've been in the car, you know, I've been in those cars on the drive home from church. These guys talking about somebody, some whoever was wearing or what man? Did you hear what he said? Did you see how he looked at me? Things like that. So you know, it's important that we know and we understand that forgiveness for our brothers and our sisters is very important, and don't overlook it. All right, don't overlook. You know uh, that bond. Don't over, don't overlook. You know, oh man, I'll just I'll just get over it. You know, make sure that you, all your issues are dealt with before you partake in this communion. And in the churches, you know, we we see all the backbiting. We see all the things going on in the churches. All right, people who don't even go go to church, they already know. They have an idea of what's going on in the church. You know, the bad reputation it has of people just backbiting and things like that, talking behind each other's back and. The madness that goes on in churches everywhere, all right? So uh, 
Let's get our next one. We're going to uh, Matthew chapter 18. We'll start at verse 15. The book of Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he, he, if he shall hear you, thou hast gained thy brother. And it, it, if you have an issue with someone, it's not, it don't go to Elder Gabar, don't go to Officer Nishar or any of those deacon or uh, officers. You know, don't go to them. Go to that brother or that sister you have that issue with, right, because this is what they do in the church. You know, I don't mean a bad talk to church, but, you know, this is, this is what we're coming out of. You know, you know, and this is what will we'll help our other brothers and sisters understand and, you know, get that, that light in them, all right? This is what goes on in the church. You have an issue with someone, you're not going to that person. You know, you're smiling in their face. Hey, how's it going? Hey, I love you. You know, things like that. You know, the fake stuff that goes on in church, what you're doing, you're going to your wife or your husband or some your, your friend or your, whoever else and telling them, man, you know what this person just did to me, blah, blah, blah. All right. We show you, you know, the scripture shows us how to deal with one another and when we have an issue. Go ahead. Verse 16. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. Go ahead. Verse 17. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglected to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. So we see this is this is the proper channel to go about when you have an issue with a brother or a sister. Let's say somebody on the line one day just says something that, that, that irks me and, you know, they did something that really, you know, caused me to get a spirit or whatever, have an issue with this person. I would go right here. You know, and say, okay, this is what I have to do. Okay, I'm going to go to that person. I'm going to call them up or whatever. Tell them, yeah, man, you know, something you did. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, that really, you know, I got a spirit. You know, I'm really just, you know, offended and really have an issue with you. All right? That person hears me. All praises to the most high. I gave my brother or my sister back. All that, all that should go out the window. That shouldn't come up anymore. All right? You know, we, we're known to harbor, uh, you know, grudges, you hold grudges in and things like that. But the scripture tells us, man, let that go. You gained your brother back. I'll pray this to the most high. We must move forward. Don't let that be a stumbling block for your relationship. All right? So now if that person doesn't hear me, bring a witness to whatever happened. Yeah, yeah Nishad, what was you on the line when this person said this, this, and that, or whatever, whatever the case may be. All right? If that, you know, if that person hears you, I'll pray this to the most high, a witness, you know, he established what, what you said, things like that. All right, if he doesn't, bring it to the church. Bring it to the elders. Then we'll deal with the situation. That's when the church will hear of it. But if you're doing, if you're going, you know, uh, backwards, you you go into the church before anything, you know, I can guarantee you, Elder Bar going to show you this scripture. I can guarantee you any of the deacons or officers are going to show you this scripture and let you know you're going off. Go through the proper channels first. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so I, okay. Verse 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Go ahead. Verse 19. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Go ahead. Verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him till, se till seven times? So he asked him, you know, how, how long, how many times do I forgive this guy? This guy keeps doing this over and over, seven times, you know, that's it, right? Go ahead. Verse 22. Yeshia saith unto him, 
I say not unto, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. So basically, you know, always forgive this brother. You know, don't just count it. Whatever. What is seventy times seven? What uh four hundred and ninety times? Nah. You know, at that point, that person should. You know what I mean? Hey, man, you got to get it together after the three hundredth time you've done this to me. Same thing. Come on, man. You know, get it together. But basically, Christ, you know, letting you know Peter know. Nah, forgive your brother, no matter what. No matter what. All right, go ahead. Oh, that was it on that. Let's get our next one. We're going to uh, Galatians, the sixth chapter, and we're going to start at the first verse. Uh, once again, we're going to Galatians, chapter 6, verse 1. So now, most high willing, brothers and sisters on the line, uh, you know, have a clear understanding on how to deal with an issue, if you have an issue with one another, how to go, how go, how, how to go about it, you know, what, what channels do I take? proper channels to go through. And this is not something that the guys in the Christ implemented. This is what our Lord and Savior taught. We only teach these scriptures. All right? So we go to the scriptures. The scripture shows us how to deal with one another. Okay? Let's get our next one. We're going to Galatians chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 1. The book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Right, so when you go ahead and when you approach that brother or that sister, when you, when you approach him in that, uh, you know, and, and uh, confront him, you know, uh, about that issue or whatnot, you must have that spirit of meekness on you. Don't just go up to that person, hey, man, what you doing this, this, and this, and that for? That's the wrong spirit to go about. The scriptures let us know how to approach it. You know, this, Christ showed us the proper channels. Now, uh, you know, here in Galatians shows us what spirit to be in, how to approach him, you know, with meekness. You know, you know humble, yeah, you know, um, brother, you know, you really did this, that to me. You know, I was really offended. Uh, you know, what, what, what's going on, you know? That's how you approach it. You know, don't just go up to him and things like that, or don't go to someone else asking for an advice. And, and, and it's just madness. In the church, you tell somebody, yeah, man, that person right there, can you believe he just did that to me? And then the whole time, this person, nah, man, oh, man, I, I can't believe that, man. I, I don't know how you deal with it. I would have I took off on him. You know, things like that. They don't give you advice in these scriptures. You know, we're going to show you this scripture right here. Hey, you know, push that brother with meekness, humbleness, man. Don't come back to me till you, you know, you handle that issue. Okay? Uh, go ahead, read, read verse 2 out. Verse 2. Bear ye one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Right, we must bear another's burden. Whatever we're going through as a body, brotherhood, sisterhood, whatever we're going through, we must bear that. Brother, brother, on hard times, the body will help him out. That's fulfilling the law of Christ. That's what Christ did for us. When, when we was down and hurt as a nation, when we was, you know, going off, you know, when we was on the bottom, our Lord and Savior came back and, and took on all, all that punishment, brought us back, gave us who we were, gave us back our identity, showed us that this world is ours, you know, the, the world to come, the kingdom is of, you know, of, you know, is of Israel, you know, we, we, we're we're gonna be the head in the next kingdom. We must get our stuff together, put us back on top. All right, that's fulfilling the law of Christ. Um, let's get our next one. We're going to Saint John chapter thirteen verse thirty four. Once again, we're going to John chapter thirteen verse thirty four. This is the book of Saint John chapter thirteen verse thirty four. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Right, because at the time, these brothers, you know, they were just in it. Oh, man, I'm going to see this brother going. You know, they were just uh, basically stoning people to death. You know, that's what they was all about. Like when they brought up the uh, sister, I think her name was Mary. I think it was uh, Mary Magdalene, I believe it was. When, you know, they caught her, I think they caught her in the act, or there were 
I think they caught her in the act of being an adulteress or something like that. And you know, they were ready to stone her. They brought her to Christ. Yeah, man, this bro, man, let's stone her to death. You know, they wasn't showing that love or forgiveness. Well, what did Christ say, man? He, he who has not sinned cast the first stone. Or uh, letting us know, hey, we all messed up, man. Why can't we just forgive this person? All right? And this is the love we must have. And in the world, they're not showing us how to do this. This is why it's important we come to these scriptures. You, you thinking to get some understanding on, on uh, brotherhood and how to, you know, um, be one body. You try to get advice from the world. This is why we must come to the scriptures to show us how to love. All right? When we mess up, hey, man, we all been there. You understand? Let's show that love to that person. Hey, brother, sister, we know you messed up, but it's all good. Our Lord and Savior forgave us. You know, we must forgive you. All right, go ahead. Verse 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one to another. And this is what we were referencing earlier, and I can give another example. This is, you know, all praises of the Most High. We were out there in Oakland. It was myself, Officer Q, uh, uh, Brother Zamar, and uh, I believe a couple other brothers. Um, you know, we were out there on the corner. I believe we were just taking a break from street preaching. We've been out there, and you know, we're looking at the cops that parked across the street, about three cop cars, you know, in the parking lot, things like that. And, and his brother and his and his girl gets off the bus, and then he's walking by, man. And he just comes up. You know, we look at him, and what's up, man? And he just comes up to us, man, this is a beautiful thing right here, man. Oh, uh, man, I, I just seen you all on the bus. You guys are, I think we were wearing, most of us is wearing white T-shirts. Like, man, you know, just uniformity right here, man. Oh, man, I, I could see it, man. What's going on over here? So just by us being out there and, and having that spirit on us of, of Christ, having that love for one another, he could tell. You know, he could tell that, hey, man, these brothers right here, they all together. I want to see what's going on over here. And what we're doing, we're doing it in righteousness. You know, not these guys on the corner who are just hanging out there up to no good. People people see them, you know, they're all together, man. They avoid those guys. You know, but they see us. You know, we out here, you know, we have a different spirit about us. Hey, what's going on? I want to see what's going on over here. Hey, what's going on with y'all? Came up, you know, shalom, things like that, peace, brother, whatever. But just, just by us being out there, being that light, showing that love for one another, he's seen that, oh, man, this is different. You know, hey, I want to I wanna see what's going on over here. So, you know, it's important, brothers and sisters, that we don't forsake the fellowship either. Uh, I want to put that lesson together by, uh, you know, Saturday we'll see kind of linking this all in together with the communion, okay? But, you know, other people will know that we are following our Lord and Savior just by the way we, you know, act towards one another, just that bond that we have out there, okay? Uh, let's get our next one. We're going to First Peter, uh, excuse me, we're going to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and we're going to start at the first verse. Once again, we're going to Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to start at the first verse. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the, of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. All right, brothers and sisters, don't forget that. When you're out there in the world, you know, remind yourself, you know, I, I, I'm, of, I'm of the most high. I'm a chosen one out of the chosen. You understand? I must walk worthy of this vocation which the Most High has called me to. This all this knowledge the Most High has given me through His Spirit, I must walk worthy of that. Wherever I go, let that light shine. Walk worthy of it. Go ahead. Verse 2. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. And I know that it gets, you know, you may get puffed up with all this knowledge the Most High has given you. But remember, meekness, humble yourself, all lowliness, you know, long suffering, because you were you were on that other other side of the conference line one time. You know, you were down there asking questions. You know, you were you, you know you were trying to know something one time. Now that you know, you know, don't get too high minded, right? We must have long suffering. We must have the spirit of meekness about us. Don't get puffed up. Go ahead. Verse three endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Go ahead. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Right, so there's one one power, one one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's only one way, brothers and sisters. And to go about it a different way, to go about it, try to uh, resolve any kind of issues or go anything outside of these scriptures is false. You know, you're getting man, uh, man-made traditions, man, man ways of thinking of things. You understand that this is the most highest words right here. This is the most highest words to us. How to how to operate on this earth. So when you go to man, you try to figure out what man got to say. You're going off. There's only one way to go about everything. That's the way the Most High has put up any or set up. Anything you go through in your life, you better believe the answers are right here in these scriptures. Everything you go through, you can come to these scriptures and get understanding on it. These are the words of the Most High God put on this earth to help us out on this walk, help us out in this life. All right, go ahead. Verse 7, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Yeshia. Mm-hmm. We all have different, you know, amounts of grace. I could do something, the Most High take me out right there. You could do the same thing, and the Most High, you know, you know, you have grace from that. You know, you'll be able to continue. Okay, jump down to verse 26. Verse 26, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Right, so when you have an issue with your brother or your sister, you have, you know, whatever you're going through, you know, it's okay to be angry. Like I said, you know, things happen. You know, we're not perfect, brothers and sisters. We're not all robots to where we all do things that each other likes and things like that. Nah, you know, there's something that a brother or sister might say on the line that just irks me. Oh, man, why do you say that? You're talking about me, then what's going on? You know, I, I got to, you know, figure it out. You know, I'm not going to let the sun go down on my wrath. I'm going to make sure that I reconcile my brother, you know, uh, not reconcile, well, you know, come together with my brother or my sister and say, hey, man, you know, what, what's going on? I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't want to cause an issue. I don't want to make this out of issue if it's not or whatever. You know, talk to my brother or my sister before the sun goes down. Why? Because before the sun goes down, we're going to be praying to the most high that, hey, the higher, please forgive me for my sins. And if you ask asking the Most High to forgive you for your sins, you better make sure that any issues you have with your brother or your sister are handled. Okay? We read that earlier. Uh, let's get our next one. We're going to Peter. Uh, the fir- uh, first Peter, excuse me. Uh, first Peter, we're going to go to the chapter 3, and we're going to start at verse 8. Uh, once again, we're going to First Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. The book of First Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. And this is the spirit we must have amongst one another. Are we going to get uh, you know upset at each, each other? Probably. But still, we must have that bond must not be broken over something small, over some, something somebody said. You know, we, hey, man, things come out of our mouth, you know, Spirit may be over us. You know, we must forgive that person. You know, we must, you know, handle the issue, whatever it is. But don't let something so small just break this all apart. All right? Go ahead. Verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but kind of rise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. Right, and we see what what, the, what our Lord and Savior went through. You know, what he went through for the nation of Israel. Israel was doing crazy things, worshiping other gods, things and that, just going off. And our Lord and Savior still, you know, was put on, you know, crucified for, for the nation of Israel. Still. And also to those who, who, you know, want to believe. But, you know, we know that his first mission was to get Israel back bring Israel back on the scene. And when he was, you know, uh, ascended into the heavens, he made the decree. All right, go, go to all nations. My work is done. Israel, you guys know who you are. I did what I've done. I, I made my father's name manifested to those who he has given me. You know, my job is done. Now we must go out in the world and preach the gospel, spread the good news. All right? 
So we see what our Lord and Savior went through for the nation of Israel and when, how they was just going off. And how he took that punishment that the law required, you know, from the Most High. We've seen how they was just worshiping these other gods, disrespecting the Most High. But still, you know, through all that, he showed forgiveness. And this is, you know, this is what we must remember. When we have an issue, a small issue, you know, with a brother or a sister handle it, man. Don't let it build up. All right? And that's what the true meaning of communion is. All right? Well, let's go to, uh, we're going to get a quick, um, you know, historical uh, reference in, in with what Father, what Father David and what he went through with Saul real quick. Uh, we're going to go to 1 Samuel um, uh, 19. We're going to start at the first verse. Once again, we're going to uh, 1 Samuel, the 19th chapter. We're going to start at the first verse. And with this, uh, you know, uh, particular uh, excerpt out of the scriptures, we see that um, pretty much Saul is trying to kill David. And how he's trying to go about it, uh, pretty much in the end, he's trying to, you know, pretty much sit down with him at, at dinner, you know, at the new moon fest, uh, feast, and basically take him out there. So we're going to tie that all in with communion. We're going to go over the story so that, you know, you get a clear understanding on what, what what's going on here. All right, so uh, the next one we're going to is First Samuel, the 19th chapter. We're going to start at the first verse. The book of First Samuel, chapter 19, verse 1. And Saul spake to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself into the morning. And abide in a secret place and hide thyself. Right, so you know that Jonathan and David, they was like brothers. You know, Jonathan was the son of uh, Saul. Hey, man, Saul wanted to kill him, so Jonathan went and told David, man, my father's trying to take you out. Go ahead. And, and Jonathan, we're going to show you what Jonathan did. Okay, go ahead. Verse 3. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field. Where thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee, and what I see, that I will tell thee. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And spoke, spake good of David unto Saul his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee word very good. Right, so Jonathan's trying to be a peacemaker. Hey, you know, David did nothing against you. you know, why are you trying to take him out? All right, go ahead. Verse 5. For he did put his life in his hand and slew the Philistine, and the Most High wrought a great salvation for all Israel. Thou sawest it and didst rejoice. Wherefore, then wilt thou sin against innocent blood to slay David without a cause? Right. He's telling him, you know, hey, David did a great thing for Israel, delivered Israel through the Most High. You know, why are you trying to kill him? Go ahead. Verse 6. And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swear, as a high of liveth, he shall not be slain. So we'll see if this guy Saul, you know, you know uh, was going to, you know, stand on his word. You understand? We're going we're gonna to see if he really meant that. Oh, man, I would have never do that. We're going to see. All right? Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michal, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou, if thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. All right, so Saul did not, say, did not you know, hold to his word. Nah, you know, I would never do that. Yet he sent in, he sent in uh, messengers to David's house to take him out. Go ahead. Verse 12. So Michal let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. Mm-hmm. And Michal took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster and covered it with a cloth. Right. So just how, you know, you see the movies where they put something in the bed to make it look like they're there. That's what the sister did. All right. Go ahead. Verse 14. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, he is sick. 
Mm-hmm. And Saul right. sent messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may slay him. Mm-hmm. Verse 16. And when the messengers were come in, behold, there was an image in the bed with a pillow of goat hair for his bolster. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 17. And Saul said unto Michal, Why hast thou deceived me so, and sent away mine enemy, that he is escaped? And Michal answered Saul, He said unto me, Let me go. Why should I kill thee? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, Jump down to verse uh, 20. Verse 20. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the spirit of Ahiah was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. So we see the spirit of the Mosai helped out and delivered David from the hand of his enemy. We see that these guys were here to take David out, but the spirit went on these guys, and now they were prophesying with him. Go ahead. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. Mm-hmm. And Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. So we see how the Mosai delivered David. Okay, uh, jump down. let's go to chapter 20. And then we'll start at verse 1. Oh, excuse me. Jump down to, uh, yeah, yeah. That was it. Chapter 20, we'll start at verse 1. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 20, verse 1. And David fled from Nioth in Ramah and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is my iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father, that he seeketh my life? Right, so he's trying to figure out what's going on. You know, how, how can we resolve this issue? Even in the scriptures, it says don't hold no grudges. This is against the it's against the Most High's law to hold grudges. Okay, go ahead. So David's trying to figure this out, and I just want to you know read a little bit here so we get the full understanding on what's going on, things like that. The main points of the uh, of the context of the what's you know the storyline, what's going on right here. Okay, go ahead. Verse two, and he said unto him. Ahia forbid, thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do not great, either great or small, but that he will show, or, but that he will show it me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. All right, go ahead. Verse three. And David swore moreover and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thy eyes, and he saith. Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as Ahia liveth, as th- and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. Mm-hmm. So David knew. Nah, man, you you telling me your, your your father won't do anything? Nah, man, he he knows that you know we're cool, we're tight, and there's only one step between me and death. I, I'm I'm right there. You know, before your father just comes and takes me out. Jonathan's trying to reassure him. Nah, he's going to let me know when he wants to take you out. Don't worry about it. Okay, go ahead. Verse 4. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do it for thee. Mm -hmm, Go ahead. 5. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon. And I shall not fail to sit with my king, with the king at me. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the field until the third day at even. So jump down to verse 18. Verse 18. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. And I, you know, encourage brothers and sisters, you know, we can get time to read the entire story. You know, we don't want to read everything. We just want to read uh, little scriptures here and there, but we still get the full understanding of what's going on. All right? So the new moon is coming up. David knew he had to be there at the feast, and, you know, he's going to go hide in the field. All right? And Jonathan was going to, let's just read it. Go ahead. Verse 19. And when thou hast stayed three days, then thou shalt go down quickly and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business was in hand, and shalt remain by the stone Ezel. Mm-hmm. Right. And I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof as though as I shot at a mark. Mm-hmm. And behold, 
I will send a lad saying, go find out the arrows. If I expressly say unto the lad, behold, the arrows are on the side of thee, take them. Then come thou, for there is peace to thee, and no hurt as a high of liveth. Mm -hmm. So he's giving them a sign. You know, you go sit in, that, in the field, do this thing, and that's your sign, and it's all good. Go ahead. Verse 22. But if I say thus unto the young man, Behold, the arrows are beyond thee. Go thy way, for Ahia has sent thee away. Mm -hmm. Let's go down and jump down to verse 27. Verse 27. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, that David's place was empty, and Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse to meet, neither yesterday nor today? Right, so we know that Saul still wanted to take him out. He was going to sit down right here with, uh, at meet with him, and he was going to take him out then. So, you know, he got, the, he got the message from Jonathan to not show up. Okay, go ahead. Verse 28. And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. And he said, let, let me go, I pray thee, for our, for our family hath a sacrifice in the city. And my brother, he hath commanded me to be there. And now if I have found favor in thine eye, let me get away, I pray thee, and, and see my brethren. Therefore he cometh not unto the king's table. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said unto him, Thou son of the perverse, rebellious woman, do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thine own confusion, and unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness? Right, so now we're going to see why Saul wanted to take him out. Go ahead. Verse 31. For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established nor thy kingdom, wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. Right, so he wanted to take out David so that his son and his lineage could continue on the, on the throne. Okay, go ahead. Verse 32. And Jonathan answered Saul his father and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What have he done? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to slay David. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So Jonathan arose from the table in the fierce anger and did eat no meat the second day of the month, for he was grieved of David because his father had done him shame. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at the time appointed with David and, and a little lad with him. Go ahead. Verse, uh, verse 36. And he said unto this lad, Run, find now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. All right, we'll read the last verse. Go ahead. Fuck it. And verse 37. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the lad. He said, Is not the arrow beyond thee? All right, so now we know that Jonathan gave him the sign, hey, man, my, my dad's going to take you out no matter what, okay? But I just wanted to bring that, you know, particular point in, in, in Scripture so that we see that, you know, they tried to use a feast. They tried to use sitting down with the brother to take him out. And we know that this is what our, our, our Judas did to our Lord and Savior. He sat down with him and betrayed him. And we know that. When we have that spirit on us, you know, that's not of the most high. And how, you know, we have to make sure that when we break bread with one another, you know, when we sit down on that table and and about to break bread and get get, get our, uh, you know, grub on, we make sure that our brothers and our sisters around us, we're all on one, one accord, one bond. You understand? And, and it's very important. All right? So you know, read, the, read the entire story, brothers and sisters. You get a further understanding. I just want to bring that out real quick to show you how, you know, Breaking, you know, he tried to break bread with them and take them out at the same time, linking up with what happened to our Lord and Savior. All right? So we'll get our last reference for tonight. We're actually going to go to 1 Corinthians, uh, the 11th chapter, and we're going to start at the 17th verse. Once again, we're going to go to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 17. And most high willing, 
uh, you know, you wrote the script, you wrote the scriptures down. You know, you, you have a further understanding on what communion means. You'd be able to, uh, you know, share it. You know, you, you'd be able to share this understanding you have with, uh, you know, someone who may not know, someone who's in the church just partaking in the communion just because, you know, it's become more of a traditional thing, more of a ritual than anything, uh, than really understanding why uh, we do it and what you're really proclaiming and stating in taking the communion. And now we're going to tie everything in, get the uh, pretty much clear everything up, tie all the scriptures we brought out earlier. We're going to tie it in with 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, and, you know, most I willing you edify through his spirit. All right, so let's get 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to start at verse 17. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17. Now, in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. Right, so Paul is letting his people here know the church of Corinth, don't come together for the better, but come together for the worse. When you're going through problems, when there's issues, you know, like no other within the body, that's the perfect time to take that communion, all right? That's the perfect time to reestablish that bond that we have with one another. All right, go ahead. Verse 18. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. Right, so, you know, he's saying, you know, I'm hearing that there's issues going on. There's divisions going on in the church, things like that. Paul's going to give him the solution right here. Go ahead. Verse 19. For there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be manifest among you. But there must be heresies. So when, when, when there's heresies within this body, you know, don't be surprised. You know, these things are going to happen, you know, so that those people who, who cause us confusion may be approved, may be, you know, uh, marked. You know, it's going to happen, brothers and sisters. You know, don't get shaken if a brother or a sister falls off. You know, things happen. It's, you know, it, it's sad, you know, but... You know, they have to do what they got to do. You know, most high willing, they'll be that sheep that comes back. They'll be like the prodigal son, you know, who comes back after he experienced all the all the madness he went through out there. Oh, you know, man, I got to go back to my father. You know, most high willing, that, hap that happens to our brother or sister who goes off. All right, but hey, you know, they got to do what they got to do. All right, go ahead. Verse 20. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. This is not to eat the Lord's Supper. So when we partake in the communion, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. This is not a reenactment of what happened, you know, Passover night or, you know, the day our Lord and Savior, you know, partook the bread and made the decree of the New Testament. All right, go ahead. Verse 21. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. All right, so this isn't a, a supper. This isn't a, to fill me up. This Oh, man, this bread is good. This wine. Man, where you get this wine at? This is not for that. This is something deeper than that. This is something deeper than just the consumption of food and drinks. All right, go ahead. Verse 22. What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of Ahia? And shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in the praise? It was like Slakia. Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Right, because why, you know, this is something deep. Man, you, you're hungry, man, go home and eat. This isn't to fill you up. You know, we're doing this to get all the divisions uh, right here in the Church of Corinth, you know, the divisions. He spoke about it before. But whenever we go through issues or just to, you know, reaffirm our brotherhood, our sisterhood, the body, you know, we partake in this communion right here. Go ahead. Verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Yeshua, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Go ahead. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat this, eat, Slakia, 
This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And we do this in remembrance of our Lord and Savior and everything that he taught us to do. That all the scriptures we went over in, in John, Matthew, and Mark, all, and, uh, you know, all the scriptures we went over. You know, we do this in remembrance about what our Lord and Savior taught us, having that love for one another, having that great love that to lay my life down for my brother or my sister. That's the greatest love of all, to love one another like our Lord and Savior loved us. Go ahead. Verse 25. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. Right, we do we do it in remembrance of our Lord and Savior. Everything he went through, the forgiveness he's shown to his brothers and his sisters of Israel. You know, how how he was crucified for them. You know, they were mocking him. What did our Lord and Savior say on the cross? Forgive them, they don't know what they do. You know, understand, you know, having that, that kind of love for somebody. You know, we do this in remembrance of our Lord and Savior and what he did for us. Okay, go ahead. Verse 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Till he comes. So we do this until our Lord and Savior returns. We do this until our Lord and Savior, you know, comes back and drinks of that, uh, of that wine with us in the kingdom. Most high willing, we'll, we'll be all there. Who knows? Go ahead. Verse, verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So you'll be guilty if you drink this unworthily. If you have that spirit of Judas on you, you know, you got an issue with somebody, you're just holding it in, you're guilty of our Lord and Savior's blood. His blood is on your hands, all right? It's just like you betrayed him, all right? You're you using his name. You say, oh, man, Hayat Bashim Yeshaya. You, you, you just, yeah, I'm all about Yeshaya. His blood is on your hands if you, you know, uh, have issues with one another. You partake in, the, in his body. You understand? That's how deep it is, brothers and sisters, and I feel that, you know, it's important. Like I said, we bring this lesson out to show you how deep it is when we take communion and how, you know, they're just, I don't know what they're doing in church. You know, they just, you know, reenacting things, playing music. Everyone's getting all emotional, things like that, holding a cup. Oh, man. Uh, you know, but yet they still have issues with one another. So I want to make sure here on this side, brothers and sisters here in this body, understand what, you, what you're doing when you partake in that communion. Okay, go ahead. Verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. All right, examine yourself. Make sure there's no issues going on with yourself. Or whatever so-and-so did to you, is that water under the bridge? Do you handle that issue? Everything must be clear before you take this communion. All right, or what? The blood of our Lord and Savior will be on your hand. You know, you'll be guilty of his blood. Go ahead. Verse 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Right. You must discern the most, you know, the Lord's body. You must understand what our Lord and Savior taught. You must understand why he, why we must do this communion. If you do it unworthily, if you, if you, you know, having issues, like I said, you're drinking, basically, uh, what does it say? Eating and drinking damnation to yourself, basically. That's what the scripture says. Go ahead. Verse 30. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Many sleep. Why? Because they partake in putting on a front, acting like everything's all good. Yay. Hey, brother. Hey, brother, pastor, hey, what's going on? Everything's all good. But, you know, many are sick and sick, uh, many are weak, sickly, and many still sleep. Go ahead. Verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. All right, if we judge ourselves before we partake in this communion, we're not going to be judged of the most high. You know, that blood's not going to be on our hands. All right, that damnation that it speaks of when we drink it unworthily will pass us. Why? Because we examined ourselves. We judged ourselves and made sure that nothing was wrong with me. I'm all good. All right, I'm partaking this, and this is me proclaiming that I love each and every one of these people who's partaking this with me. I have no issues whatsoever. 
All right, go ahead. And, and, and I'm just showing our brothers this is how important it is that we must have that love for one another. You know, don't be like, you know, we see in the churches. You know, don't be like that. We must have that love and say, yeah, man, that's my brother right there. And I'll lay down my life for him. Or well, I'll lay down my life for my sister right there. All right, go ahead. Verse 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. Mm -hmm. Yep, go ahead. Verse 34. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together into condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Right, so when we do this, you're hungry. This is not a meal. You know, this is very deep. And most high willing, you got to be understanding now. You know, you'll be able to show someone, you know, the true meaning of communion, uh, you know, all praises to the most high. You know, uh, thank you for attending tonight's class. Uh, the water officer in the shop for your reading, and all praises to the most high. Shalom.